Hey everybody, welcome to another episode of Know the Pro with your man Sabu Sacha, powered by Marshall Music. Today I've got a very special guest for you, a friend of mine, um, a colleague of mine, a, a brother behind the kit. You guys know this person, you've seen him all over the show. I'm talking about working with the likes of Ringo, working with the likes of, she was, okay. Um, <laughs> you know what, this guy has done so much. Let me just introduce him. He's done so, so, so much. He's actually played even with some of the people I play with. So let me just introduce to you, ladies and gentlemen, Snigiwe Mabaso. Brother man? Manik. Yeah. How you good, brother? Good, man. How are you? Man, fantastic. Yeah. Social distancing. Of course. COVID of vibes. course, man. Yeah. We have to adhere to the regulations, you know? <laughs> Lovely to have you. Man, likewise. It's a likewise, pleasure, man. man. I haven't seen you in forever. So, firstly, Happy New Year. Happy New Year to you too, yeah. brother. It's amazing. We're saying Happy New Year in April. <laughs> in April. Yeah. Um, man, yeah. So, I mean, tell everybody about yourself. Yes, sir. Hey. Ah, this is me, guys. Snigiwe Mabasu is my name. Born and bred in Fos Um uh, I'm a drummer. I'm a music producer. I'm an arranger. Yep. I've played with the likes of Ringo, as you mentioned. Yep. Ringo, Killed that gig. Uh, yeah. <laughs> totally. Yeah. Ringo... Uh, the late Mums Vong in the Kumalo yep. as well. In 2014, I had the pleasure of actually doing her gig as well, mm -hmm. which was a lovely experience. You know, um, Zahara and is a, a joyous celebration yeah. as well. Pastor Benjamin Dube, just to name a few. Yeah. The list goes on yeah, and on yeah, and yeah, on. It goes on and on. Yeah, but um, born and bred in Fosloris, started playing drums. Uh, at the at, at I think I think I was like six, mm. yeah, at a very tender age, man. You know, I was still a very young man at the time, and I was mentored by the great Temba Masina. Yep. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. You know, he was the guy that was showing me around. You know, and just you know showing me the way everything was just around the kit yeah, and everything. Yeah. You know, and then uh, shortly after that. Uh, I took over a seat yeah. at the church at High Praise, you know. I started playing, he started singing, you know, and it was a, it's, it's, it's been great, man, ever yeah, since, you know. Yeah, just one thing led to the next. Yeah, it was just a joy ride, man, you know. Yeah. Um, yes, sir. You've gone on to, I mean, to become a professional musician, a, a recording musician, so to speak. Um, what have you found to be challenging in your journey specifically your your work in in the industry man i've found quite a few things really challenging you know um you know but uh having had or being surrounded by a certain number of musicians you know more especially in the church that i grew up in and that i grew up in um it has been rather uh, encouraging, you know, because from a tender age, I was surrounded by every, every big musician you can, ever, you can ever think of, you know. Um, Pastor Benjamin Dube is a big deal. Right, right, you know? yeah. And growing, growing up under his ministry, you know, and him taking care of us, you know, when we were young, you know, trying to pursue music, you know, and him allowing us to actually go out into the world when we were fit enough, I mm -hmm. suppose, you know. Um, I've, I've actually encountered quite a number of things, you know. Um, in terms of work, you know, salaries, and you, you know how this music <laughs> thing is set up, yeah, yeah. you know. So I had a lot of questions about that, you know. I felt... Uh, I'm one person that probably knew my rights, mm. you know, probably knew my worth at a very young age. Yeah, but long story short, the challenges I faced are, man, the money issues, man, you know, just uh, voicing out my own opinions as to how I feel, mm. you know, with whatever money I get and 
you find yourself just, you know, stepping on somebody's toes, you know, and people feel like you're yeah. big headed or you know everything. Yeah. You know? And yeah. That's basically my biggest fight. That's the biggest fight I've ever had to encounter in the whole industry, you know, and the gigs that I've done and that I've been doing, you know. But God has been good, man, through it all. You know, some of the gigs were had a fallout with those artists. <laughs> some of those relationships were maintained, you know. But yeah, we're still good, man. We're still good. We're soldiering on. Yeah, soldiering on. Yeah. Yes, sir. Now that you speak about um, money, I, I, I'm just thinking it's it's a quite a touchy subject. Um, Indeed. And I don't know. Maybe I'll ask you. What is your? I don't know. What is your view? Why? Why is it such a? you know, walking on eggshells kind of subject when it comes to money. What has gone wrong? What has, you know, what was not done right? Maybe, if, lack of a better word, yeah. What was not done right? Yeah. I feel the musicians that came before us, you know, I don't know if they probably didn't have the courage to voice out their opinions at the time, you know, or they were just held up by the by the wave you know how you know how music mm -hmm. is spiritual you know the music just hits the heart you know and sometimes you just don't really care how much you're getting paid for the gig as long as you're just on stage so that you can just pour out your heart mm. to the people and stuff you know so it is a possibility uh, i've never really looked into it but i feel had it been fixed by uh the previous generation you know a lot of fights right now would have been won, I suppose, yeah. you know, lack of a good word. You know, a lot of those disadvantages would have been fixed by now. You know, we would have probably been able to engage with the departments of art and culture, most probably on a personal level. Right. You know right, what I mean? Right. Yeah. It's, it's, it's actually, I don't know how to put it, but it's, it's, it pains me that we have a minister of arts and culture that does not know us by name. You know, Oof. he does not identify yeah, yeah, yeah. with you. You yeah, know, he doesn't yeah. know what you've done as a professional musician. Yeah. You know, same here, a lot of us. Yeah, you know? not just him, I think. Exactly. Um, generally, in our country, I think it's a big issue that we have. Absolutely. Um, yeah, we're not politicians, but <laughs> yeah. Um, this is a very touchy subject. Even um, the white guys behind the camera. <laughs> actually, yes, even Devaldi agrees behind the camera. So, um, yeah, I don't know if I want to get into that. Yeah, it's hectic. But it's quite a, yeah, probably a, a topic I, we're actually going to talk about on the show um, intensely when I've got more of the guys here. Um, things are on a lighter note. Um, yes, sir. Let's just talk about um, your. Your work, your your work experience. You've you've come this far. I mean, I know uh, what you've done. I've seen you grow uh, from when you started. I met you years ago. Yes, sir. When you started, I've seen what you've done. But just for the people at home, um, I mean, really, who are you? What are you about? And what has it taken for you to arrive at this point? Because people see you now and they think, ah. Sneaky or sneaks or pockets, you know, they just yeah. know you now as sneaks or pockets, but they don't know what it took, you know, the years and sweat, blood, and tears True. that went into you being you now. True. Man, it has been a, a journey and a half, you know, filled with joy, sweat, tears, mm -hmm. fights, heartbreaks, heartaches, you know. Sleeping in the car, sleepless nights, yeah. you know, all the tours, just driving all around the country, you know, just promoting an album or whatever, you know. But uh, all in all, I've learned so much from everything I've been through, you know. Um, I, started, I started this, I started playing drums prof professionally in 2009. Right. Yeah, with Ntlan and then 2010, we recorded, I recorded my first DVD with her mm. at uh, Joy of Jazz right. in Newtown, you know. And shortly after that, got Zahara, got the Zahara gig. Zahara DVD, yes. yeah. Yes, 
you know, we toured around the country for a good two years with her, you know, and there were a lot of issues, there were a lot of things going oh, on. Oh, you, you don't know, have to tell me, I yeah. know. <laughs> you know, there was so much happening, man, but I guess it was just a journey that I really needed to go through, you know. Everything I experienced, I guess, is, is something that, that, needed, that I needed to experience so that I grow into the kind of musicians, kind of musician that I am right, right now. Right. You know, yeah. So that's basically all it took, man. It took perseverance. You know, it took patience. Right. A lot of it. You know, right. it took patient uh, uh, practice as right, well. Right, right. Yeah. Yeah. I used to. You know, I I still do, but I I used to work very hard to get to this level. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, um, especially in the church that I hail from. Mm -hmm. You know, the uh, pressure. The of... pressure, man. You know, taking taking over. After Temba Masina, yeah, you know it was it was hectic. Yeah, speaking of practice, man. I mean, um, how many hours would you say you put in? Well, I know now it's quite difficult. Now you are a working musician. I mean, of course, I'll speak because I know what it's like now. We don't have the luxury we used to have back then. But I mean, back then, what was your timeline like? What was your timeline like behind the kids i remember in 2006 7 i was still in high school at the time i used to practice a lot i used to practice a lot and i think at most i would put in a good six hours mm. in a day of course you know spaced out right, you know, right. just wake up in the morning a young two hours just before i leave for school and when I come back from school, a good four hours, if I can, you know, before or probably after homework or whatever, you know. But uh, as I grew older, man, uh, I've been checking out the likes of you, the likes of Legan, yeah, yeah, Breda, yeah. the likes of Kevin Rogers, you know, mm -hmm. Chris Coleman, you know, Aaron Spears, right. all the tutorials and stuff. Those those are the things that basically made it easier for me to actually grasp whatever information that I needed to know at the time and, and just work through, yeah, you know? Yeah. So, yeah, it's, it's, it's been that long. It has been. Yeah, it it's, has. It's, it's been it has. that long, man, um, you know? You've done so much, you've come such a long way. I mean, Absolutely. You've, you've worked not only as a drummer, you've produced, you've co-produced, you've um, arranged, you've... Um, and I know with us drummers, I mean, there's that sort of, I don't know if it's a, something that's a tag that's put on us, that we are just the other guys in the band. True. But um, I'd probably say you probably one of the other, uh, the only other drummer I know to have come from a few, of course, that I can mm -hmm. count only possibly in one hand to have come and produced and arranged and what was what was your your preparation i mean to get you to a level where you can start speaking to other band members mm -hmm. musically and not just talk rhythm section but you're starting to understand harmony you're understanding um, yes. how to arrange how to how did that happen for you uh a lot of people don't know but i actually come from a very musical family Right. You know, my mother used to sing a lot. Okay. You know, my dad was a choir conductor as well. Oh. You know? So I suppose those type of, you know, elements and stuff, you know, just rubbed off in terms of understanding harmony from a, from a very young age because they used to rehearse at, at, at home right. as well. You know, some rehearsals were, were held at church, some rehearsals were, were held at home. You know, and I was always around. I was yeah. just always within the, you know, <laughs> the vicinity. Yeah. Whether I'm just playing outside or whatever, but I could hear, you know, something was happening, you know. And I just took a leap of faith, man, at some point when, when Zaza approached me yeah. you know, to actually co-produce that album. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I was like, no, man, I can't do it, you know. And... Obviously, it was, 
it was my first time. Yeah. So I had to go around and ask people around me yes, who, yes. who are experienced in that field, you know. And luckily, I grew up with Uboli Tabet. Okay. Yeah, who is one of one of the best producers, gospel producers around, and he was the guy that was guiding me throughout the whole, you know, journey, and. It's been great, man. You know, it's been the reception has been awesome. Yeah, yeah. The the album actually did well. Did very well. It did man. very it did well. Very well. I had a young hit there. <laughs> <laughs> you know, <laughs> it was it was massive. It was yeah. great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I just took that leap of faith, man, and uh, I actually believed in myself. You know, yeah. I believed that I could do it. You know, I could actually speak the language, even though I didn't go to school, but I I knew what I. Mean what I expected from the guys, right, you know, right, and I could right. convey the message, right. you know, which is, which basically takes me back to church as well, because yes. the church that I come from, that was the language, yeah. you know, so I picked up everything from there, I learned the language, I learned the skills, I learned literally everything, you know what I mean? So, yeah. What I'm, what I'm getting from you is basically you're saying it's important to to be the best you can be in whatever position you're at in your life. When you were at church, you didn't just take it lightly because you were just a drummer in church, but you listened to everything and everyone and what was going on around you and you, you let the environment fill, fill you up Absolutely. with information and you sucked everything in and it has helped you yes, sir. come this far. Yeah, no. Without wasting any more time before we get to gear and talk gear and talk, um, you've become now part of a band called Band of God. Yes, sir. Um, I'm yet to have the other guys here. Um, yeah, well, maybe briefly, tell us the story about Band of God. Yeah, hey, B.O.G. <laughs> B.O.G., yeah. <laughs> yeah, man. B.O.G. Uh, is basically a, an ensemble right. of of four music producers, right. arrangers, and professional mu musicians as well. You know, there's Tsepo, Kutwano, Mano, and I. Yes. Uh, Kutwano, I, and Tsepo met in 2007. I was still in high school, you know? And Tsepo, we met around 2011, 2012, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. you know? So how, how the whole band started, uh, we were in studio uh, recording a, a project that we were producing. And then uh, we had BVs, obviously, in the vicinity because we wanted to finish the whole project mm -hmm. in that day, like the whole recording of the project. We had to finish it that day. I think it was about five songs or so. Yeah. So now, as we were recording the songs back to back, it was just like literally one takes, mm -hmm. you know, off the songs. No rehearsals, no nothing. Clean. Just clean, one takes, back to back. We literally recorded, the, we did the whole session of five songs in about two and a half hours. Oh, wow. You know? So every time we'd finish a song and then go have a listen, and it sounded proper, the BBs would keep saying, Band of God. You know, right, <laughs> and would laugh about it, you know, and whatever, you know. But then, I suppose it, I don't know, it grew, you know, it got out, got out, got out of the studio, and it went straight to the whole industry. Everybody just, you know, associated us with that, with that name, right. basically. When they saw the four of us, whether at a gig or whatever, they would just say, "Hey, Band of God," you know. Mm. I don't know, maybe it's how we made them feel, you know, when we play or whatever, you know, but in a nutshell, uh, that's basically the story about how we got the name, you know, but, you know, when we dig deeper into it, every time we, we play, we are all saved, we are all Christians, mm -hmm. all four of us, you know, so every time we play music, every time we, we, we rehearse, you know, every time we create music or we try to be creative, you know, and would always picture a band in heaven, mm. you know, and see, you know, like in a in a in a in a 
in a mental picture, you know, try visualize how a band in heaven, especially in gospel gigs, when they play, how perfect does it sound, you know, how precise does it, does it sound, and the overall sound of what may happen in heaven that gives glory to Jesus, what would be Jesus' re Jesus' re reaction right. to to towards that sound, mm. and would always work towards that, you know. Now every time we we play, we think about God, we think about Jesus, and we're just giving glory to God, man, mm. you know. Mm. And yeah, started this started the whole band in 2015. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we've worked with Dr. Dumi, we've worked with. Robbie Malinga, we've worked with mm -hmm. Maliso, Ducky, Ducky Ndo, yeah, yeah. Uh, Semito, you yeah, know, okay. Mosa, Mosa as well, you know. Man, it's been it's it's been a humbling journey, right. you know. To be honest, right. it's it's been beautiful. It's been fantastic. Yeah, man. Yeah. Well, um, awesome, awesome. Uh, well, amen to that. The church <laughs> say amen. <laughs> so yeah, let's let's talk gear. Um, I mean, I've seen you playing this and that. Uh, what is your go-to gear when it comes to your personal setups and, yeah. and brands that you... Man, the brands that I, I actually affi affiliate with, you know, or I don't know, lack of a good word, I, I gravitated towards ATW drums, Tama drums, you know, uh, those are basically on my on my technical rider. Right. You know, Sabian cymbals, of course, as well as Veta drumsticks. Yeah. You know, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I love I love the wood in those. You know, and what basically drew me to 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 those brands are the kind of drummers that inspire me. You know. I've seen I've seen Aaron Spears play DW drums. Yeah, you know, I've seen yeah. Tony oh, Rosta yeah. play DW. Oh, yeah. You know, I've seen Eric Moore play DW. Oh, yeah, I've seen yeah. you play DW. You know, <sighs> Legan as well. Oh yeah. <laughs> you know, so all the drummers that I I actually uh, check out, you know, used it. So I tried it out. You know, just trying to find myself, just trying to to find. You know sound. my sound. Yeah, you know yeah, yeah. the specific sound that I, I needed, and I got it from DW. I got it from Tama, uh, the Bubinga series. Right. Yeah. Sounds amazing. You know. However, I use a spawn at home. Yes. Yes. You know, I have a spawn precision crafted kit. Uh, it's 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 a beautiful kit. You never bring them, your yeah. you never bring your spawn out. Eh? Yeah, I, ne I never do, you know. But I just recently recorded Ducky's latest yes, album yes, with yes. it. Yeah, it was my first time. I just decided, you know, what, let me just yeah, you know, play my baby for once, <laughs> you know. And sounds amazing, man. It has an acrylic finishing. It's just beautiful, you know. The sound is magnificent yeah you know and it's 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 basically who i am it just represents me you know yeah yeah, yeah. we have a we have just a connection with that kit yeah you know and yeah the type of skins i use are remos okay yeah the black suede. all right i love those i love those you know yeah they're okay <laughs> <laughs> the sound that they actually project you know marvelous marvelous yeah, um, that's I'm, just that's, that's just me, man. I'm that's glad that you 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 know, um, and I think people at home as well. You guys are seeing that it's, it's not about um, what kit, what skins, but it's about finding your own sound yes, and being the best you can be with what you love and with what you want to use and make that sound good. Um, man, I've heard you on countless recordings i mean we could count until the memory card runs out on the cameras we could Amen. count you've sounded amazing and amazing even more amazing and amazing and amazing and amazing <laughs> you know every time i hear you i'm just thinking man that just sounds so good and thank you brother i've been watching you man i've been following your work and i'm proud of you um i know a lot of people may not say this you know but i'm really really proud of you I've, i think um, people don't know 
where I've seen you start and where you've come to be now. True. Uh, you're an amazing musician and man, I just think um, keep doing the best we for this generation now and for a very long time. You're still holding it down and you're going to hold it down for a very long time. And I'm proud to know you. I'm proud to be part of a generation where you are existing. It's for me, it's just mind blowing. And so many other musicians as well, but I'm just blessed to know, you know, there's a few I can pick out. And I'd really say you are that one that I'd pick out that I count in my top list. You're amazing. So ladies and gentlemen, if you want to say bye to the people, man, <laughs> sneak away, my boss, or better known as Sneaks or Pockets. Yes. Yeah, man, you can send a shout out. Man, thank you so much for having me, Subs. Yeah, it's an honor, man. You know, I really appreciate this platform, you know, and being involved in it. Uh, big shout out to BOG, big shout out to uh, my homies. Yeah. You know, big shout out to you as well. You know, um, another thing I wanted to mention to you is that Tanj is coming back. Oh, yeah. Yeah, man, we're having Tanj again this year, you know, and yeah, it's going to be bigger, it's going to be better. You know, I hope you're going to be there. Okay. Yeah, I hope okay. you come through, man. You know, but we have the chat. So you can hold me to it. <laughs> you can hold me to it. Yes, sir. Guys, Snigwe Mavaso, thank you to Marshall Music. Thank you to the gentlemen behind the cameras. Um, thank you for having me here. This is Know the Pro with your boy, Savu Sacha. And you just heard Tanj is coming back. So Marshall Music, I don't know what we can do to support Tanj, but we'll talk about that offline. You guys, until the next episode with the next guest, see ya.